the Grattan fight marked the commencement of three and a half decades of sporadic warfare on the Northern Plains. On a summer afternoon in 1854, a young lieutenant, aggressively attempting to apprehend a Sioux Indian for a minor offense, instigated a conflict. By sundown, all the troops except one had perished, an outraged American public, unaware of the true circumstances, called for action. The Sioux and other northern tribes, with whom relations rapidly soured, conducted numerous raids along the Oregon-California Trail. The following year, General William S. Harney spearheaded a punitive expedition onto the plains from Fort Kearney, Nebraska, spanning from 1855 to 1856. Thus began the Indian Wars, a bitter and generation-long struggle. In the years leading up to the Grattan fight, despite the influx of settlers moving west along the trail, the Northern Plains Indians had maintained a relatively peaceful existence. In July and early August 1854, approximately 600 lodges belonging to the Brule, Miniconjou, and Oglala Sioux, as well as a few from the Northern Cheyenne and Arapaho, populated the North Platte River Valley, extends for several miles to the east of Fort Laramie, Wyoming. The significant gathering of Native Americans, with the potential to overpower the fort's weak garrison, anxiously anticipated the overdue annuity stipulated in the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1851. On August 18, 1854, a cow inadvertently entered the village as a Mormon caravan traversed Conquering Bear's Brule Camp, approximately eight miles east of Fort Laramie. The cow was shot and killed by a mini Conju Indian visitor named High Forehead. The incident was reported to the fort by both the Mormons and Chief Conquering Bear of the Brule tribe, reaching Fort Laramie's commanding officer, Lieutenant Hugh B. Fleming. Despite the chief's offer to make amends, Lieutenant Fleming declined and chose to arrest High Forehead, a move contrary to existing treaties. The responsibility for this task was given to John L. Grattan, an impulsive 24-year-old lieutenant recently graduated from West Point, and he was granted broad discretionary powers. The following afternoon, Grattan, accompanied by an interpreter named Lucien Auguste and 29 infantrymen, embarked with a wagon and two small cannons. They made initial stops at the Gratiot House's fur trading post and then at James Bordeaux's trading post, situated 300 yards from the Brule camp and eight miles southeast of Fort Laramie. Despite Grattan's objections, at both locations, the intoxicated interpreter mistreated and threatened Native Americans who were present. High Forehead resisted surrendering. A sequence of meetings involving Grattan, Conquering Bear, and other chiefs reached a climax in front of High Forehead's lodge, where Grattan eventually advanced his troops despite the warnings from the concerned James Bordeaux. The chiefs presented fresh offers to compensate for the cow, beseeched the unyielding Grattan to delay action until the Indian agent arrived, and persistently urged the stubborn High Forehead to surrender. Conquering Bear clarified that High Forehead was a guest in his village and not under his authority. Adding to the complications, some impulsive young Oglala warriors arrived, disregarding Grattan's orders. Conquering Bear, distrustful of Auguste's translation and aiming to prevent a confrontation, attempted but failed to secure Bordeaux's translation services. As the situation escalated, Brule women and children fled from the camp toward the river. At some juncture, a few shots were discharged, resulting in an Indian being struck. But the chiefs advised the warriors against retaliating. Convinced of the necessity for a more substantial show of force, Grattan instructed his men to unleash a volley. Conquering Bear collapsed to the ground, fatally wounded arrows were unleashed. When Grattan fell, his unit panicked and engaged in a fleeing skirmish along the Oregon-California Trail. Eventually, the mounted Indians, compelling the foot soldiers onto level ground, overwhelmed them. All perished with the exception of one fatally injured man who managed to make his way back to Fort Laramie. The Indian chiefs believed that the Great White Father would recognize the soldiers' partial responsibility for the conflict and would pardon the Indians for the battle, so they refrained from launching an attack on Fort Laramie. Within a short span, they did, however, loot Bordeaux's trading post nearby, taking both annuity goods and company property from the Gradio houses as a substitute for their annuities. Subsequently, the Brule left the North Platte River Valley. The Cheyenne and Arapaho only remained until the distribution of treaty goods before moving on. In the meantime, 
life at Fort Laramie resumed its usual rhythm, but the previous sense of security had vanished. The U.S. press dubbed the incident the Grattan Massacre, overlooking the fact that U.S. soldiers had triggered the event by shooting Conquering Bear and that Grattan had violated treaty conditions with his intervention. Upon learning of the skirmish, the War Department began strategizing retaliation to discipline the Sioux. Soon after, General William S. Harney was dispatched to Fort Kearney, Nebraska, assuming command of portions of his own 2nd U.S. Dragoons. On August 24, 1855, they embarked on a mission to locate and seek retribution against the Sioux. On September 3, 1855, they encountered the Sioux in the Battle of Ash Hollow, alternatively referred to as the Battle of Blue Water Creek. Happening near present-day Llewellyn, Nebraska, numerous Brule Sioux warriors lost their lives. Certain historians argue that the Gratan Massacre may have set off the subsequent several decades of sporadic warfare on the Great Plains. The location, held under private ownership and utilized for ranch activities, is distinguished by a stone monument situated on the north side of the road. Substantial contemporary modifications to the terrain for irrigation objectives hinder the precise determination of the positions of those involved in the confrontation. The spot where the enlisted men were initially interred, marked by a cairn, is approximately 200 yards west of the likely location of the Bordeaux trading post, discernible by ground debris. They were subsequently transferred to a collective burial at Fort McPherson, Nebraska National Cemetery. Grattan's remains are laid to rest at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. The probable location of the Grayshit houses, similarly covered in debris, can be found approximately 10 yards from the river, around a quarter mile east of the headgates of the Grayshit Irrigation Ditch. This site is situated in Goshen County, between an unpaved road and the North Platte River, roughly three miles west of Lingle.